So this is a follow-up video which is going to be a step-by-step -step, uh, guide into how to create the Newton's method using specific buttons on the calculator. Uh, so I'm actually going to take you now step by step rather than just showing you the completed program. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the program key and I created uh, a program called NM2 which is Newton's method 2 which is just going to be a copy of the old Newton's method. So first let me show you the original Newton's method the original Newton's method begins with a prompt and so the prompt statement is an input output statement and it is going to ask you to prompt in different values so notice I have G comma N so let me go back and if I can <clears throat> let me go ahead and show you how to create a program scroll over to new we're gonna create a new program Notice the cursor is blinking in A. That means it's in alphanumeric mode, which means it's ready to receive letters. And if you notice above your keys, you have letters. And so I'm going to name this program NM3. To get the 3, I have to leave alphanumeric mode. So I hit the alpha key. And notice the A, the blinking A, is now gone. So I type 3. So now I'm ready for program three. Okay, how do I get the computer or the program to prompt me for input? Well, here's what I do. I hit the program key again. Don't worry, you're still, you haven't left your program. You're now in editing mode. It's an input output function that I desire. So I scroll over to IO and these are the different ways you can get input output. I scroll down to prompt, I hit enter. Now, I want to input two values, one that's my G and the other value that is my N. So I say alpha, well let's find G on the keyboard here, let's see EFG. Now notice it's left alpha mode, it's blinking, so now I need a comma, and the comma is located right here. Now I have to return to alpha mode, so alpha and let's find n and so now my program will prompt me for two numbers so actually if I do second quit and if I run my program program execute nm3 then all this program is going to do now is ask for two numbers hit enter again what is g I'll just say 8 and what is n n is 6 done <laughs> and that's all my program does all right, let's go ahead now and let's go back and check. Now I need a for loop structure. This is a control structure right here. So for I starting at 1, going up to N, <coughs> which was plugged in, uh, increment by values of 1. So if I starts at 1, then the next value will be 2, then 3, then 4. Change this last number, let's say it would be 0.5, then it would go 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so on and so forth. So this last value is how much n increments each time. Okay, so I need that for structure. So let's go ahead and return to my program. You have to go to edit mode if you don't want to run it again. And now I scroll down to the next line, which is denoted by a colon. Hit the program key, stay on control, scroll down, and then hit enter. Now, this is going to work great, but it's so annoying to type this stuff in. So here goes. For alpha, now we need to find i. Whoa, that is totally not what I wanted. Try that again. For alpha, i, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i. There it is. Comma, starting at 1. Comma, up to, up to what? up to the n value that I typed in, comma, in increments of 1. Hit enter. Now everything that below is below the for loop is going to be in the loop until I use the end statement. And then that's going to end the for loop. So OK, let's check out what the next statement I need is. So the next statement that I need is G is my guess. You have to plug in a guess in a Newton's method because you got to start the whole process. 
So g is my guess. g minus the function at g divided by the derivative of the function at g. And so we're going to have to go to alpha and then g minus now the function. And so vars, y vars stay on this category. Whoops, I'm sorry, I apologize. Vars, y vars, which is right here, choose the function option. y9, which I don't really have to scroll down. I could have just typed the 9 and it would have gone straight to that. y9 of what? y9 of the guess. So back to alpha and then g, close parenthesis divided by the derivative. So how do you access the derivative? Well, you hit the math key. Go down to derivative, which is the eighth option. So I type eight. Derivative of what? Derivative of y9. So back to vars, y vars, function, y9. Now, there's a reason why there's an a here. So a is a dummy variable. So the first thing the calculator will do is it will find the derivative with respect to this dummy variable. And then in place of the dummy variable, it will place our guess. So that's the purpose behind all of this right here. So I chose a. You basically can choose anything you want except uh, n and g, because those are the values that we typed in. So a, close parenthesis comma, now we're going to replace a, comma, with g. So where's my g again? Let me find my g. There it is. Good. Now we're going to store all of that back into g because that obtains our next guess. So you hit the STO key right here for store. And then we store that back into g. And that creates our next guess value. And so this program is going to go again and again and again until it gets up to n, n times for iterating. Now, notice there's no colon here because this is all considered one line. So the moment I hit enter, I am on a new line. Now the for loop won't stop until I type the end statement. So I hit the program key. I want to go to option 7, which is end. End is a control statement. Then I hit enter. Last thing I want to do is display what the final value is, the approximation by Newton's method. Have I found a zero of the function? So back to program. Display is an input-output control. I can choose option three. And I want to display my G. Da-da-da-da. OK. Well, let's see if this bad boy works. Let's go to y equals. Let's clear that out. And I'm going to go down to my y9. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's figure out where cosine of x equals x. So that would mean I'm going to type in cosine of x minus x. If I find out where that's equal to 0, then I have essentially figured out where cosine of x equals x. Make sure I'm in radian mode, and I am not. I'm glad I did that, because if I hadn't have done that, it would have been bad. All right, now let's go to my program, NM3. Enter again. All right, what is your guess point? Well, I'm going to say that it's approximately around 1. And then we'll just let the program run from there. I'm going to run 10 iterations. And it says that the value in radian measure is about 0.73908513322. So let's go ahead and let's graph this function. So window from 0. And why not? We'll graph it from 0 to 1, x min, y min, negative 1 to 1. All right, let's just see what the damage is here. Do, 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 do. Ah, that's where you cross. So let's use the second calc feature. Second calc. Let's find the zero of this bad boy. Do, 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 do. 
it wants a left bound, so I hit enter. Now it wants a right bound, so I'm going to scroll to when it goes below the axis. And now, am I ready to guess? Yes, I am. Hey, ha <laughs> ha, my Newton's method is working. Thank you, Lord. And that's it. That is a step-by-step -step guide for how you type in <coughs> Newton's method in a TI-84. God bless you, wherever you are today.